the other students there were very discouraging. They were like, you're never going to get anywhere doing electronic music and that sort of thing. With no knowledge of anything outside of England, really. This is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk Show, and I'm here with Chime. What's up? It's originally born in Leeds. Uh, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Leeds, north of England, uh, near Manchester. Are your parents originally from there as well? Um, no, so my, my dad's from Leeds, but my mum is from Wales. Oh, okay. Which is the other one. You've got Scotland, <laughs> Ireland, Wales, that's the other one. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so they kind, of, they kind of met there, I think. Mm -hmm. What did they do? Um, what do they do? Yeah. Um, oh man, this is difficult to describe. Well, my dad owns a graphic design business. Oh wow. Although I, he's currently in leaving that and uh, going on to kind of make films and oh, do wow. consultancy things and yeah. What kind of films? Um, just his own kind of short films, really. Oh, wow. uh, so he um, he made a film about Northern Soul music, which is a kind of like a. a I, I'm not the person to describe <laughs> this, but yeah, uh, it, and he kind of submitted it to, well, he had it showed at the South Bank Centre in uh, London oh. at this thing called the Be, uh, Being a Man Festival, mm -hmm. so it's kind of like um, uh, showing the other side of, like, sexism, oh. you know, how it is kind of figuring out what um, effect sexism, sexism has on men. As well. mm, I'm yeah. getting really deep into this. But well, what's his name? Maybe <laughs> people can find this stuff. Um, I don't think it's online right now. But oh. he's he's working on some more um, kind of short films and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then my mum is impossible to describe. So she's a yoga teacher. Um, she teaches Bollywood dancing. <laughs> That's and, so cool. Um, she's trying to do comedy stuff. Like stand up and or. She did try stand up for a bit, but I don't think that worked out for her. And then it was like she's now doing like comedy mixed with burlesque. So you know Theresa May, yeah, the uh, current well, yeah. actually not current um, British Prime Minister. <laughs> she did a burlesque act that was her stripping no off, way. and it was all very political and Brexity. And is that online? Um, she actually went on Britain's Got Talent. What? So it is online. Um, Wait, how, so, how can people find it? Um, I think if you put in like Britain's Got Talent, Theresa May, I'm pretty sure that should come <laughs> That's up. That's so crazy. And I also helped her out with the music, what? Uh, like mixing the, all the stuff she needed for that. And uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. So very difficult to describe. <laughs> Can't wait to watch it when I get home. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess you had such a creative upbringing. Like they just sound yeah, like the ultimate creative. Yeah, people. creative is the word. Like the whole family is kind of creative. Like my older brother um, does like graphic design and motion graphics. Mm -hmm. Not motion graphics. Kind of visual graphics, visual effects or whatever. Yeah. And then my younger sister is going to university for illustration. Oh wow. So, uh, yeah, all creative mm -hmm. for a lot of us. Were you doing instruments like early on? Uh, no, so I actually didn't really think I liked music for a while. Yeah, it wasn't until I kind of, uh, I listened to The Prodigy, mm. um, Omen by The Prodigy, that's what yeah. kind of kicked off um, me liking music. But I realized the whole time during my childhood, I'd been soaking in all this video game music I'd been listening to. <laughs> and really, that's where I got a lot of my musical inspiration from. So when I started producing it, I was like, oh, this sounds like some very obscure Game Boy game I played. Like, and I started embracing that a bit more with my music recently. Mm -hmm. um, so what age were you when you started produce? This was, wait, this was eight years ago, right? Or was it 10 now? I think it was like 15. Oh, wow. So like 10 years ago. Yeah, because I'm 25, by yeah. the way, everyone. Same, I'm same. Not <laughs> um, yeah. Were your friends around you producing? Uh, not really. Not really. I mean, it was the UK, so it wasn't like, you know, it, here nowadays you can you can go out and find like 
wannabe producers everywhere, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. But um, back then in the UK, not really. No. Yeah. So, yeah. How do you describe your personality back then growing up? Personality back then growing up? I had no idea what I was wanting to be like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a lot of trouble um, being myself, I think. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I wasn't very popular in school or anything. And um, wasn't confident. Uh, so I just kind of went to school as a different character every day, trying to see what worked. Yeah. And Did it didn't work. <laughs> no, it just made me more weird than I already was. So, yeah. That's how I just So you didn't, did you like school, like, academically, or you didn't like that either? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I did decently um, in the academic side, but I, I always kind of was like, what's the point of this? What's the purpose? Hmm. What enjoyment does this bring to anyone? <laughs> Um, yeah, I was always like, what's the point in maths? I did decently, but uh, towards the tail end of school, I was like, I really can't be bothered with mm -hmm. this anymore. Sure. High school, what happened? Uh, so I did go to university, because um, there was a lot of pressure, really, in England to get a degree, because mm -hmm. otherwise they kind of scare you into it a little bit, especially at the school I went to. They were like, if you don't go to university, you won't get a job, you won't get anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, uh, I ended up going to um, University of Huddersfield, uh, I did popular music production, oh, which wow. sounds great, uh, but it was terrible. <laughs> uh, I also recently found out that um, Sean, Dr. P, yeah. did exactly the same course at the same no place. Way. I'm like, what the hell? Um, but yeah, like, years earlier, mm -hmm. like, as soon as it started. And he's like, oh, did they, um, did they forget to teach you how to produce as well? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, so what were they teaching you? Um, well, it was more like producing bands, you know? Um, it's like recording bands and um, more the technology side of things, really. Mm -hmm. um, Did you not like that? Well, I wanted to do the creative side of things. I yeah. wanted to produce and learn how to mix down well and stuff. But yeah. really, yeah, it just wasn't a lot of that, really. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a pain. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, the lecturers and the other students there were very discouraging. They were like, you're never going to get anywhere doing electronic music and that sort of thing. With no knowledge of anything outside of England, really. Yeah. Yeah, and then they did like a business module. And I was like, right, yes, we're going to finally get into how do I make this a career? And really it was just one big uh, advertisement for a placement scheme they had in Warner Music offices down in London. Wouldn't and that I be cool like, though? Or I guess you, that was, that's not really No, that's, that's like the admin. opposite of what I wanted to do. <laughs> I was like, that sounds like an office job. And it was. And I was like, can't you tell me how to make music, uh, make money doing other things in music? There's so many different things. Sample packs, um, working on like Foley I wanted to get into and that sort of thing. And they just gave me no guidance. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit crap really. Uh, yeah. Were you sub, uh, December by this point? Um, yes, yeah, so December was kind of my university days. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. were you sending out music? Yeah, I remember I was, it was like second year of university actually when Disciple first started and I sent them a very poorly mixed but I'd say alright track. Yeah. And I think um, Rob Dodge got back to me and he was like, yeah, it's, it's pretty good this but give it a couple years, you know. Um, so it's cool that I'm like now actually working with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Do you yeah, have but I was a, just like yeah. shooting things out, seeing what stuff really. But my mix down needed a lot of work really. That was the main thing. Were you starting to get a fine base for December? Uh, yeah, it was around that time. It was kind of like EDM.com and Dubstep.net. They started doing, um, started uploading my music a little bit, and then that kind of. Uh, that's where I got my initial following and stuff. Mm -hmm. I tried to associate myself with uh, other similar artists that were a bit bigger than me, like Panda Eyes and Temanite, who I'm still yeah. with right now. Um, yeah, so that was kind of where I got mm -hmm. my initial following. Did you just become friends with them online? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was basically doing a big hustle and trying to hit up everybody I could for like collabs. Um, I was aiming for those producers that were like a little bit higher than me so we could like share followings and stuff but also we had similar styles of music so 
Um, yeah, but it's cool now that like we're staying in an Airbnb together, like yeah. me, Tem and I, in different heaven. And I was like, oh, you guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, I was. I remember sat in my room, depressed, wanting to be like in with this group, and now I am. So. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's cool. And then what happened after uni? Uh, after uni, I was kind of floating around for a little bit, um, just kind of waiting for things to kick off. I was working really hard on like the chime stuff and trying to. Oh yeah, what made you want to change your name? Uh, yeah. Well, December's a terrible name. I like that it's a three though, right? Yes, but <laughs> like I w I like the way it looked. There was there was kind of meaning behind the three and everything as well. But um, what's the meaning? Well, there's there's three E's in December. Oh yeah. Which one do you replace with a three? The first, second, <laughs> or third? And it was the second one, yeah. which was like the least searched one. Oh. So I did it so that people could find me on Google and not just like Christmas. I mean, that's stuff. smart. This was like <laughs> 10 but years ago. It wasn't smart. The beginnings smart, of Google. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't smart though because uh, nobody could spell it correctly. So, yeah. <laughs> Didn't really work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I changed it to Chime when I kind of started working with my manager and things started getting a bit more serious. Um, I was like, I gotta fix this name before it's too late. And I've got to like stick with it for ages, so uh, yeah. That's was there why. something specific for a time or like, um, I feel like it's such a jump from December to? to uh, it was uh, like four years ago, I think. Yeah. I think we had the four-year anniversary recently. The chime specifically, I wanted something simple. Um, I wanted something that didn't sound necessarily like specific to dubstep as well. Oh yeah. So I could make whatever I wanted for the rest of my life and put it under that name, you know. Mhm. Mm um, so. Yeah, I didn't want something like Kill the Noise uh, or Squirrel X, you know, yeah. they sound quite particularly aggressive and dubstepy, you know? Yeah. So I thought Chime fit the kind of brighter, more colourful sound I was going for. Mm -hmm. um, but decided to go for something that would be very difficult to search now. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like the total opposite. I know, yeah. It's That was the one <clears throat> thing that I kind of um, had to just kind of deal with really. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, people people know to put in dubstep after time yeah. if they want to find me. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, one day maybe it'll be like the ghastly situation where he's like above the oh, yeah. dictionary <laughs> definition of ghastly. <laughs> um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. Seems to be fine. Really. Yeah. And, and once I came up with the, the logo idea with the wind chime, yeah. I was like, I, I really like mm -hmm. that. Because I wanted a symbol I could just have on its own yeah. to represent um, my brand. Uh, I was like, yes, this, this works. <laughs> How did you meet your management? Um, so my kind of main manager, uh, Han, uh, I met him through Fox Stevenson because um, Fox Stevenson, we're actually from the same hometown, yeah. Leeds. So um, yeah, and uh, I think he kind of recommended me to my current manager. And uh, so he started working with me and then we kind of made it official, I think a, a couple more months after that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he is, Han is a complete machine. Oh, really. I love that. He's like a full-time lawyer. What? He's just had a kid and he manages like 20 plus artists. That's insane. And he's just, oh, he must be just like a workaholic. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> wow. I think, yeah, he manages, um, uh, tri uh, Trivector as well. I saw you recently did. Yeah, well. and were you working other jobs? Um, I was kind of a bit of a wuss, really, <laughs> and didn't end up getting a proper job. Oh, so you, could, you were living with your parents, so you didn't really have the... Yeah, I was just trying to make things work <coughs> with uh, music. I kind of, that was the thing, I sh should have probably done a degree in something that I could actually get a career in. Um, but I was just a bit stupid at the time and didn't really understand. Um, so I put all my eggs in one basket. I was like, I've been better make this basket work. I was actually really close to um, going back to university to do like marketing because mm. um, I thought that was the only thing I could maybe do um, and not hate. <laughs> um, but luckily, like pretty much a couple days after I went to the first open day for that, um, uh, Han hits me up and he's like. We're gonna figure out a tour for the US and figure out like um, 
the work visa and everything else. Oh, like, wow. So you already had a fan base by then? God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, this was in sort of like 2017. Um, so yeah, it's fairly recently I've been able to come out here, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, this is my fifth tour out of wow. here <laughs> at, at this point. So yeah, it's been quite a few. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so that's not that bad. Like you were, after you graduated, were you at home like for a year just working on stuff before you um well i was or? staying in i was staying in huddersfield because um my girlfriend at the time well current girlfriend girlfriend at the time because she's my fiance now yeah <laughs> that makes more sense i saw your tweet like miss chime so cute yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was also studying law at uh huddersfield so um we were kind of just like hanging out in this kind of crappy town um yeah we just kind of waiting for her to finish her stuff so yeah and I was just working every day on music stuff really and just trying to make that happen how did you pay rent then or it was because of her yeah yeah oh. because we, we had shared um, accommodation and mm, stuff. that makes stuff easier <laughs> and then how did you meet uh, firepower um, yeah so yeah we were kind of thinking of which label we could shoot for and Pam had um, connections with firepower because Fox Stevenson had done a couple of releases yeah. with them and because he'd been able to put some kind of melodic stuff on there I was like oh okay cool they're kind of open to that um, so that's when I initially I sent them the From Fairies to Fire EP which was the first one and they just like took it as is uh, I think they wanted me to change like one thing oh, wow. and I was like oh nice and that was that was really exciting because it was the first um, first kind of major label release I had um, and then like did an interview with like UKF and stuff and that was all very exciting for me um, yeah and yeah it kind of went from there so we just kind of hit them up with an EP and it just yeah <laughs> they liked it <laughs> yeah how about it with Circus? well Circus was kind of the opposite um, Sean Dr. P uh, got in touch with me on Twitter that was quite a message to wake up to <laughs> yeah how long ago was this? Um, a couple of years ago mm -hmm. two years ago I think yeah is like, oh, I really like your stuff. Let's, um, we'd love to release an EP with you. And I was like, oh my god, because I mean, Circus has been, yeah, you know, a huge influence on me, and uh, for I mean, for years, really. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so I was like, uh, oh, I'm gonna do the most circusy chime EP ever, and uh, yeah, so I gave him that, and then uh, we did two EPs there, so. Were you scared to submit the first EP? Do you feel pressure, I mean? Um, I think it took me quite a while to submit it, but I don't know, I don't know if I was scared. I, yeah. I, I thought it was pretty, I, I was pretty confident they'd take it because it was very much their kind of like old school circus yeah. style. Um, and then really what came from that was um, uh, Rossi, a disciple, really liked the tune Face Punch, which was like um, super Roscoe and old school, which is his cup of tea. And then that kind of led on to me releasing on Disciple as well. So I'm yeah. kind of between my own label, Circus, and Disciple now. Mm -hmm. um, well, so when did you start your own? When did I start my own? I think yeah. it was like three years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, at first I was a bit like, well, basically, uh, my management suggested I should um, get my own label up and running so that I could put out self-releases if like I made a tune and then the bigger labels wouldn't want to release it. Oh yeah. Um, and then I was like oh we could like release tunes from my friends as well uh, and that became a bit overwhelming <laughs> after a while um, but then kind of a year in to that I was like I should start focusing this more on the melodic side of things so I can help uh, give like smaller melodic dubstep producers a bit of a um, uh, stepping, stepping, mm -hmm. uh, what's the word? Stepping stone or what? Yeah, no? um, the first step on the ladder. That's oh, the yeah, because <laughs> um, yeah, there really isn't, isn't a place for a melodic dubstep to start really. So I thought if I could cultivate that, that would be, that would be cool. So it's all just kind of color based, I call yeah. it now. Um, How much time yeah. do you spend on that now? Is it something that you're like actively looking to grow and do more of that than your personal or um, are you juggling it? Yeah, I mean it's, it's, it's definitely a side project. <coughs> I think it's, it's more for helping out friends and um, 
you know, people can say they've had a release on my label and that kind of can give them a hand. Uh, and it's also just kind of like a passion project, really. I'm not, I'm not making, I'm not looking to make it as big as like Circus or Disciple or whatever. It's a great way of conversing with the other melodic dubstep producers that are out there that are less well known and finding a lot more of them as well. Because I've had submissions uh, from people and I've gone, this is amazing. And they have like tiny followings. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I basically just want to find out everybody who's making melodic dubstep right now and kind of try and support them as much as possible. And uh, yeah, and that's yeah. mostly what I want to play out live as well. Mm -hmm. So I get some really good um, demos on there for live shows as well. How did you realize that melodic dubstep is the one that you want to lock into? Because I feel like you tried like some other type of sounds or genres before. Uh, yeah, well originally I was doing drum and bass. Yeah. Because um, that's just kind of what I knew. But I got into dubstep kind of post Skrillex which is weird for a UK yeah. uh, artist, really. Um, but that's when, really when I started to, um, being more interested in it because, um, yeah, I don't know, the sound design just kind of connected with me more and um, mix down wise it was improving a lot mm -hmm. as well. What advice would you give to someone who's watching who uh, wants to produce also, but they can't decide on which genre to focus into? Um, yeah. I don't know. I'd say if you're if you're starting to produce, you can you can try any genre out really. But it's it's just about trying different ones until something clicks really. Because um, I was originally making drum and bass and dubstep at, at the same time because there was more kind of multi-genreism back then. But um, yeah, I don't know what my advice is really. Just whatever feels right in terms of. Uh, yeah, whatever you're most excited for mm -hmm. making. How did you find out or realize that Liquid Stranger, he's um, using your presets, right? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think, I think he is. Well, it was a couple of weeks back. <laughs> um, I was hanging out with a friend of mine, Kelsey, in Seattle. And um, I, I'd never really listened to Liquid Stranger's music. Um, so she was playing me some of it. And then um, there was one track, I can't remember which one it was, but I was like, I'm pretty sure that's my patch. Because <laughs> um, like uh, four years ago, as I think it's December, I put out um, like a massive presets pack. And the, yeah, there was one, uh, two sounds actually that sounded really distinct. Um, and we were just like out in the car playing it. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's it. And then I got back, um, got back to where we were staying and uh, like found that patch and then recreated what he did with it. Oh. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's what that's what happened. But it was it was cool. I was like, did you ever oh, confirm that's... it with him? Uh, I think I tweeted at him being like, um, oh I think Liquid uh, Strange yeah. uses my patch, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but I don't think he responded or anything. It's like I'm out it. <laughs> yeah. How would you say you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger? Well I'm definitely more sure of myself um, in terms of who I am. Because <laughs> mm. yeah, I was just like I was very insecure as a as a kid, and I just didn't. I took a lot of offence to things and stuff, mm. and uh, I'm a lot more happy with who I am now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with that, what kind of advice do you have for someone who also feels like insecure or a lot of self doubt? Uh, for me, it was just kind of a gradual thing, and like meeting my fiance was a big mm. um, made a big change to my like confidence in myself. Yeah, I, I don't pretend. <laughs> I, I mean, I think everyone's trying to learn how to be themselves, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, which is tough to figure out. I mean, I think everyone's trying to be authentic, apart from people who are like quite obviously being like pretentious. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that should be everyone's goal, really. Because um, the, those people become the best people, I think. Mm -hmm. The people yeah. who are most themselves, I tend to enjoy a lot, you know. Find the people that do like you. Mm -hmm. What would you say have been your biggest challenge in your life so far? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how much I can say. Um, yeah, so, without being like too personal, um, my partner's, one of her family members uh, passed away. Mm, and so um, that was like, basically three or four years of our lives just kind of like wiped yeah. out. Kind of dealing with the aftermath of that is ongoing and in terms of like our um, mental wellness and everything. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a constant um, struggle really. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's kind of had an impact on everything and we're still yeah. you know, dealing with it. So 
Uh, yeah, definitely mm -hmm. that. What does love mean to you? Oh yeah, I forgot this question was yeah. going to be asked. <laughs> is this, do you ask everyone this? Yeah, ask everyone. All right, it's a good one. It's a good one. Well, I think support is is mm. one of the, the biggest elements. If you're, you know, you can be infatuated with someone, but if you don't support them, I don't know if you could call that. Love. Yeah. It's very difficult to define. That's the thing. Like in English, we only have one word, but in other languages, they have lots of different words for for love. Um, for example, like kind of familial love is different from like sexual or relationship love or whatever. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's difficult to define just because English hasn't really figured it out. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think it is just um, pure enjoyment of sharing um, mm. uh, experiences wow. with people. Yeah, I and love I think that, that that's, that's completely... You know, that can be friendship or uh, whatever, you know. It's, um, yeah, it's not specific to just relationships mm -hmm. um, or human beings because my dog, oh my God, <laughs> I would kill people <laughs> to save that dog <laughs> any second of the day. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, yeah. Think, I hope I've answered the yeah, question. Yeah, I love that. Last question, what do you want to be remembered for? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because really, um, people are only going to remember me for maybe up to like a century after I go. So I, I don't really worry about it. Yeah. Honestly. I just want to I just want to enjoy my time, not hurt anyone, have fun, and uh, bring some level of joy to people's lives. Yeah. So, I love yeah. that. This is so much fun. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Bye.